Hello everyone, my name is Ashutosh Pardwaj and in this video, we are going to take a deep look at covering in JavaScript with an example. So make sure to watch this video till the end. Alright, let's jump in. Let's start with the problem statement, shall we? So here we have a problem statement. Write a function that will provide the same output regardless of whether the arguments are passed all at once or one at a time, that is partially. So if we have a function, let's suppose add 3 and we pass 3 arguments 1, 2, 3 to this function, the output we ex expect is 6. Now if we call this function in a slightly different way, that is we just pass a single argument 1 and then invoke the result of that invocation by passing 2 and 3 as the argument. We still want the output to be 6. And now consider this case. So one argument at a time. So in, in the last case also we want the output to be 6. To implement this example, we will turn to functional programming paradigm. In this video, we won't go in, in detail about functional programming and what are the benefits and how to use in JavaScript, but we will extract a very particular point from it, which is current. This technique of converting a function that takes multiple arguments into a sequence of functions that each take a single argument. So in the previous slide, we have the last point where add3 is called by giving one argument at a time. So that particular case, we can achieve it with current. We will see how in a moment. I will be using code sandbox for all the live coding and coding exercise. I will share the link for code sandbox in the description box. So please feel free to check it out and follow along. So here it is. I have code sandbox open for JavaScript project. Beside from this messaging, we are importing a add3 function from a file called solution. So it seems like we are way ahead of ourselves. Just kidding of course, this is the final solution. And I just wanted to show how this actually works. So I have console log by calling add3 with all three cases. And as you can see in the console at the bottom, we get the same output for calling this add3 function in these three cases. For the purpose of this video, we will try to figure out how to approach the solution from ground up. So we will start by implementing the base case and then we will build the solution up from there using first principles. So let's do that. The simplest case is of course calling it with 1, 2 and 3. Add is a function which takes three argument, namely a, b, c, all of them are number and it returns a number that is the sum of all those three past numbers. And for now, curry is a simple method, uh, which is basically doing nothing. We pass it a base function and currently it is returning the base function as it is. So if you look at line number 13, we have our add three, which is, uh, transformed by curry or pseudo transform by curry by passing add. So at this point, if you try calling add three with passing one, two, three as arguments, we will get six as the result. Let's try doing that. I'm going back to the index file and replacing the solution with our custom made add three. And as you can expect, the browser yells at us because of course our current implementation fails. It doesn't support these use cases, which are mentioned in line number 12 and 13. Because we are just passing base function as it is and our base function just returns a number, not a function which we can invoke later, hence the error. I'm going to comment out these lines so that we can move along. After commenting these out, we have our solution working back, but it is just working for the base case. 
calling add 3 with 1, 2, 3 result in 6. There's no fun stuff yet. So let's move on. So if we think about it, the base condition for add 3 is equals to add 1, 2, 3. So in the base condition, our add 3 function behaves exactly like add, which is we wanted. And we can figure out when that base condition is. If the arguments pass to add 3 has the same length as the base function, which is add in our case, then we can say that this is the base case and we will just want to execute the base function, which is add. So let's change the curry function implementation to reflect that. So now the curry function will be a function that takes a function base function as argument and return another function. That return function gathers all argument as args and checks whether the args length is equal to the base length, base function length. If they are equal, then we call base function with args. Otherwise, we will do something else. At this point, it is not important. So I'm going to just call curry with the base function. Later down the video, we will see what to do with the if the condition is false. But for now, let's focus on this. At line number 11, we are using these three dots uh, in front of us. This is rest parameter feature in ES6, which basically aggregates all the arguments passed to the function into a single parameter of type array. That's why on line number 12, we can check the property length of this array. And if the length of args and the base function are equal, then we will call the base function again. Now we are using three dots again in front of args before calling the base function, but here they are acting like spread operator, which extract each value from iterator such as array so that our base function, which is add can accept one arguments because it doesn't expect an array, but it expect three arguments. All of them are numbers. So that way, if we refresh the browser, our add three function is still working for the base case. So there we have it. We have figured out how we can write this curry function to make add three work in at least the base case, which is a good starting point, of course. It is missing a couple of functionalities. First of it is, first one is, it needs to somehow accumulate all the arguments passed to it in sequence. For example, if we were to call add three with just one, then calling the result with two, then calling the result with three, it should somehow aggregate those arguments at a later point till a later point where we can just call the base function with all those accumulated arguments. The second thing that is missing in our current implementation of curry is that it lacks the ability to self invoke itself. What do I mean by self invoke here? We will know in a moment. The self invocation is very important because if we try to call add three as it is, if we try to call add three with the current implementation of curry by passing one and then passing two and three to the result of add three invocation, we will get a function instead of a number. Let me demonstrate that. I am heading back to the index file and clearing the console for the second. You can see that after uncommenting the second case, which is on line number 12, we will get function in response to add three being called by one and then again two, three instead of a number. That is because the function that is written by curry 
is not calling itself again with the parameters we can also check the output by using to string so that we will see what function is returning from it just to be sure so as you can see it is returning the inner function which checks the condition based on length and call the appropriate function that is why this curry function needs to be needs to have a mechanism which can self invoke self let's fix this i'm going to extract all the inner functionality uh, instead of currying being a function that returns a function that returns a invocation i will make it return a function which is not a normal function but is a self image which is an immediate invoked function expression and because it is immediately invoked we need to pass an argument so like earlier we are going to pass args to it by spreading it so in this case the a will be an array and then again we will check the length of arguments the inner function is still at as it is we have just made it possible to be self invoked immediately invoking function f expression now we need to add the ability to accumulate all arguments for that i'm going to add second parameter to our curry function which is accumulated args you can call it whatever you like but for the purpose of this video i'm going to call it accumulated args and i'm going to assign it a default parameter which is also a es6 feature so that we have it as empty array and then in the recursive condition i'm going to pass whatever argument we received as parameter a into curry this as second parameter accumulated args and in order to make it all work we need to pass all the accumulated arguments to the inner function so i'm going to do that on line number 18 now we have a solution to recap curry is now a function which takes two parameter base function and accumulated args which is provided a default argument of type array empty array this accumulated args will help us in accumulating all the arguments that were passed over the time the inner function returns a self invoking immediate invoke function expression to which we will pass accumulated args and args as parameter now let's head back to index file and try calling this function if we run our function again you can see we get the right output that we expect now let's try to run the third case which is calling at 3 by passing all three argument one at a time this is all working nice it seems like we cracked the code man so there you have it guys we have created a curry function from scratch which turn our simple base add function into a function which we can pass arguments partially one at a time now i am going to add some console log to demonstrate what is the different states or processes of execution that this curry function goes across so i am going to console log the, the value of accumulated args args and parameter a as you can see in the console over time we accumulate 1 1 to and then 3 into accumulated args as you can see on the screen we have these values accumulated over time using accumulated args and using this self invoke function you can see that first we don't have anything in accumulated args then we receive 1 and we accumulate it then we receive 2 as an argument we accumulate it 
then we receive 3 and we accumulate it again. Using this approach, you can convert any base function into a curry function so that it will receive arguments partially. The example we use in this video is very straightforward, but in real life cases, you will come across different sort of examples where it is necessary to yeah. not use all argument at once, applying them partially. This is it for this video guys. I hope you liked it. Please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends and fellow learners. Also, please consider subscribing my channel to watch more such videos. Take care and I will see you next time.